Next on Face the State, can kids change the world? What began as anger over the school massacre in Parkland, Florida, led to a walkout of students across Connecticut and is now moved to Washington. Our coverage of the March for Our Lives is straight ahead with Susan Raff talking to local demonstrators in the nation's capital who made the trek. What do the students want? We're joined by three school presidents, Tori Chandler of Ellington High School, Nisha Rivera of Wilbur Cross High in New Haven, and Chase Jeter of Hall High School in West Hartford. Our flashback, 25 years ago this spring, the NRA came to Hartford to fight lawmakers on gun control. It's all right now on this special edition of Face the State this Sunday morning, March 25th, 2018. From Eyewitness News, Connecticut's most watched local political program, this is Face the State. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Dennis House. This has been a history-making weekend across the country and here in Connecticut as young people are demanding stricter gun control from their lawmakers. March for Our Lives events were held all over the nation and our state. The biggest in Connecticut was in Hartford, where more than 10,000 people crowded the Capitol lawn and Bushnell Park to call on their elected leaders to act now. Some came by bus, most of them carrying signs. The demonstrators seemed to be from all age groups and many children, teenagers and college students were there. Speakers included Connecticut Senators Richard Blumenthal and Chris Murphy. Several candidates for governor were also taking part in the event there. The biggest rally was held in Washington where half a million people turned out. Channel 3's Susan Rapp is in the nation's capital for us this morning. And Susan, good morning to you. Good morning, Dennis, from a chilly nation's capital. It's quiet this morning, but as you said, there were a lot of people here. I think they're estimating the crowd maybe could have been as much as 800,000 in the march yesterday, the March for Our Lives. And keep in mind, it was just organized possibly three or four weeks ago, and they, were ma they managed to get that many people here. There were quite a few people from Connecticut. In fact, the Sandy Hook Promise and Newtown Action Alliance brought in about seven busloads of people. So we're talking maybe 400 or so. They had a very strong presence here. They organized quite a bit to get people here. We also met some people from Parkland, Florida. This is very raw for them. They're, they feel in some way they're part of a club that they didn't expect to be part of. We actually had the chance to speak to a teacher from Stoneman Douglas High School who was there that day. It's hard for him to talk about it, but he says that he's very proud of his students. He feels that what they're doing now and speaking out will energize this movement and keep it going forward. As you know, many of the people who took part in this march, they want to change. They want to see gun laws changed, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they want guns taken away completely. 97% of uh, average Americans, even the majority of NRA members, want a 100% background check all the time. Um, private gun sales should be more regulated. Uh, over 60% of Americans want assault weapons banned or at least heavily more regulated. Um, I mean, it's a non-issue, and this doesn't happen everywhere else. It's so frustrating, and it's so heartbreaking, particularly for those of us from Connecticut and from Florida and from these places where we're feeling it so viscerally, and the change is molasses slow. And I think what's really crucial is that we raise awareness that we just want responsible gun control, right? That no one's looking to take away everyone's constitutional rights. Let's just be responsible and put our kids' rights to have safe lives above people's rights to bear assault weapons. It took the young people to, to put a stop to the Vietnam War, and um, we're seeing that same kind of activism now with young people who are informed, who have lived through this before, who have seen this happen, and now it's come straight to them. And they're not going to take this lying down, and they're going to demand the change that they want to see for their own future. People from all over the country came to this march. This family here, we bumped to, to here outside the nation's capital, came from Florida. It must be pretty chilly for you this morning. It is a little chilly, yes. <laughs> we want to thank you. You came to this uh, all the way from Florida. Was it Parkland that made you want to come, or is it, has it been the shootings that we've just been witnessing? I think it's been um, too many shootings. I think Parkland was the motivator for this movement, and it's amazing, but I think that it's been too many. As a parent, you have uh, how many children? This is my son, and these are our cousins, brother and sister-in-law. Do you think that the young people now are making a point that enough is enough? I mean, most of our kids, and my own daughter, has mm -hmm. had lockdowns all her life. 
yeah, I think we're done. I think we're done with this. I don't think we need to teach our children how to remain silent in a scary situation in a school. I think we need to change what's happening to the policy so that we don't even have to worry about them going to school. I'm a teacher. Um, you know, this affects me in my classroom. Those are my kids too. And uh, it's very scary. Did you have a walkout in your school? Um, no, my school didn't have a walkout, but I did hear about other schools that did. You're 11 years old. Yes. It's kind of scary to think about what's happening, isn't it? Do you worry about it? Yeah, I always worry about people coming into our school, and we had to practice all the lockdowns, and I just, I don't want to be in that situation at my school. I want my school to be a fun place to be. We want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us and have a safe trip back to Florida. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things that we noticed yesterday, which was very interesting, that they had a big voter drive uh, trying to get people to vote and register right there during the march. So again, a lot of these young people now are somewhat energized and uh, they're going to use that uh, energy wisely, they say, and vote uh, when they do turn 18, Dennis. Many of them will be voting for the very first time this year. Susan, I want to ask you, did you get a sense of from the Connecticut people, did they all sort of hang out together or were there different groups of them from what you noticed? I think there were different there were different groups, but they all kind of congregated together. We met at Judiciary Square, which is a metro stop here. Uh, many of those buses uh, had to drop off people, so there were very it was a very coordinated effort. As you know, the Sandy Hook Promise has been doing things in schools, and uh, they've been organized for years. So in a sense, they, you know, they're I hate to say it, they're used to it, but uh, they certainly put a very good effort forward to get everybody here, uh, and they marched, and you couldn't miss them. They had their big green Sandy Hook Promise signs and t-shirts so uh, a very united effort to say the least. Susan at the Hartford rally yesterday I noticed just a couple of counter protesters did you see any in Washington at all? Uh, not too many. I do know that there was a pro-gun rally at about 9 o'clock in the morning, a very small one. We're told it left the uh, Trump Hotel here in Washington, D.C., but it was very small. We really didn't see any protests at all, although we did see people with signs that said, Gun Sense, and we asked them what that meant, and they said that they basically feel that, you know, gun rights should be protected, that that is part of the Second Amendment, and people have a right uh, to own a gun, uh, but there are also people who feel that a assault weapons, specifically the AR-15, should not be uh, legal. And as you know, it is not legal in Connecticut. Susan Raff, thank you. In Washington for us this morning, we've put your report from yesterday on WFSB.com if people want to check out your in-depth reporting from Washington. Thank you. When we come back, three local school student council presidents weigh in. And we invite you to take our poll right now on the Channel 3 app or WFSB.com. Do you think the March for Our Lives will change anything? We'll be right back.